Okay, just going through a typical training session for myself. And looking at the correspondence games I've got currently, um, some some I'm advantaged in, others might be a little bit sketchy. So looking at the first one here, this is a seven day match. And we have this past pawn that we're trying to do something with, but we're also a bit scared of these pawns here because he's got a pawn majority on this side. So I'm thinking there's probably going to be some type of rook exchange going on here i could look to actually get my rook here to maybe challenge this pawn but i think he's uh probably going to be coming on this side here but then we can push but then that's where the rook exchange thing comes in and do i actually win on this side here my king is highly elevated up the board so i'm assuming it's a plus so my next few moves, I'm um, just um, if we have a look at the last few, just to see where we're at, we pushed up to block off this pawn pushing down onto here. Then the king has gone to the far corner, looking maybe for like the rook sacrifices, uh, you know, exchanges. So we push up now, blocking the king a little bit more. And now they've done their rook move here. So at the moment, his king can't get to here. so i'm wondering why the rook move has been done is it just to do a move per se because it does have pawns that can be moved is he looking to support his pawn coming down here because if he does move either way if he moves there to protect we could push the pawn onto the king we if he then takes then we take and because we've got our king here he wouldn't be able to get it back so i'm not too sure what that was so i'm plumping for attacking this pawn with the rook that's my decision and this one here i think this is one of the sketchy ones where i'm not too sure what's actually happening so we push forward Put a check on with the queen onto the king pushed onto the knight smaller piece attacking a higher piece and in this game i'm like thinking yeah the chomping at the bit to actually get these pawns down but we do have a rhinoceros head that can deal with that and what else is there our bishop is under attack at the moment so we and we have got a minor piece up so we could potentially just take this pawn with the bishop if we wanted to takes back and then we take back but then his queen's on our knight so it looks like we're getting squished in a stealthy way if we take the pawn back he's won like a tempo to actually win our bishop but i suppose we can win his knight so if we take and if they take then our bishop can come back and it's defending the knight and also saving itself so they must be contemplating oh look at the danger zone that's the danger zone right there checkmate see it checkmate because of the knight being there so if we took the knight off the board then he's not got a checkmate but his pawn can take here then our bishop can take the pawn is there another continuation we must take this knight with the pawn take the knight with the pawn his queen is still eyeing up this area is he still going to come through uh, does his pawn take with a check if the rook takes his queen's Queen cats quickly so I think yeah Phew, it's a good job that way because when you're playing a lot of correspondence games it's sometimes hard to um think where you're at but yeah we realized he's gonna come for a checkmate so we need to take this knight off the board yeah I think that's what we'll do okay 
I do love the correspondence games. Um, you've got a longer time to think. Um, there is the caveat, obviously, that, you know, people could be using engines or whatever it is, you know, for the longer games. Um, but for, I would say, the majority of the games, I, feel, I felt fairly happy and comfortable playing correspondence games um, on all of the sites that I'm on. So it does help to it's a different sort of it's a different world you know playing a longer game there's so many and if you're in an advantage then it's even better because you're like thinking yes i'm actually winning here this is really good how can the opponent come out of stuff um and you appreciate the advantages that you've gained more in the game but then when you're disadvantaged you go how is this possible i can't believe this is happening and you can't move any faster because it's a correspondence game so um if you make quick moves in a correspondence game then you're definitely not using utilizing all of the time that you've been allocated to actually make those appropriate moves so this is why I like the, the correspondence thing. Sometimes you want to move a bit quicker because you're like, oh, yes, um, let's get this over with. Or yes, I'm in an advantage. Come on, make your move. Uh, so there is that aspect where you think, oh, come on, I'm going to have to wait another two days or whatever it is. Um, but it, it's good fun. So in this particular one here, let's have a look. Just flip back to where we went to. So a smaller piece attack, the higher piece. Looks like we're up a minor piece here oh two minor pieces oh he's got the rook yeah so we've got issues yeah so he's got the rook and we've got uh, two minor pieces so he's moved this rook off of the line strange as it may seem obviously the bishop's protecting here so he's now looking to support his pawn coming down okay so he's also supporting it because we've got a two on one here on the pawn so this is a bit tricky really i'm probably going to have to bring the knight back but i've got all my pieces almost you know on the same side as their king so i'm obviously thinking i want to try and get there but at this moment it doesn't look like it let's have a look at what the pieces can do could capture got three pieces on there pawn takes knight takes knights on the bishop opened up space around the king yep that's a sacrificial lamb there bomb he captures and captures so he's not going to stay there knights here Queen probably looking to come here for a discover check. It's all a bit slow, but does he just move out of the way? He's got his dark square bishop. That opens up our dark square bishop. Got to be careful of this file here. Need to have some flight squares for the king. Tempting, but uh, I think that's probably one of the ways to go. Just open up space around the king. But I don't know if I'm willing to do it just yet feels quite good it feels nice one bomb knights here space in front of the king it's just getting to the king in the first place that's the concern uh, maybe he pushes his pawn to here Uh, we'll just take the bishop if he did that. Or oh, maybe the bishop attacks, comes across, looking to defend the king this way. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I'd love to look at the evaluation after this one. I bet you it does say take this pawn. <laughs> okay, so we have options. Small push here. I feel like this pawn's just going to jump down anyway. Small potatoes. 
and it's going to be looking here. Those look like the danger zones. Uh, some of the sitting here, no. Dark Square Bishop, it's not really doing much. It wants to get seated here, really, doesn't it? I think moving this pawn is going to be okay. After all of that, let's do that. And in this one, oh, this is the one where I'm saying this is a draw. <laughs> it's, it's quite obviously a draw. Got the same amount of pawns on each side. His king's more elevated up the board, I suppose see what the last moves were okay so I started moving my king up but he's just moved his king across so he's now looking to support his rook I'm thinking go here but he's probably not going to be interested he might just start doing the dance uh, oh, I'm just going to go for it see what happens looks like a draw to me I've not looked at the rating I should have looked at the rating maybe and gone well should we go for a draw but at this moment in time look, my correspondence rating i think it's just hit the 1800 mark uh, i'm not too i'm not too bothered about that it's more trying to improve the quality of my game so even if the person's a lower rated player if they've got to that stage there where it's a it looks like a draw then there's nothing else i can do about that so this one here immediately i can see that we're going to be down a tempo he's attacked our bishop but his bishop now is attacking our rook our knight is attacking his rook so it's all a bit sketchy and i don't think i win out in this although i do have a check on his king and that's probably where we win out unless of course if we do put the check on his king just comes here then he's attacking our knight but then we can take his bishop off the board so we would have two rooks against his knight and that's the picture that we can see yeah could take but then we lose out on um, getting rid of a higher piece so I'm actually taking here yeah, I think we worked that one out. Okay, nice one. And this next one. Yeah, I've not I'm not developed in this game at all. Really. I'm still on the back. Yeah, it's a bit shady. So we've grabbed grabbed equal material. I think it says plus two or something like that. For us maybe, yeah. Again, up a minor piece. <clears throat> up a minor piece and looking to take off a rook here. I don't think I'm going to keep the tension because we've developed to this stage. So I'm, I'm just going to take the rook off the board. Yeah, I'm just going to take the rook off the board. And this one here is just the king dance coming all the way up here like this to get the pawn and get a promotion so I'm not su I'm surprised the opponent's not resigned that one and this one looks like it's just started so we're x-raying through to their queen with the bishop and we're also attacking this knight as well so there's multiple things going on there so I think we could take the knight because we've got a two on one and this pawn is protected by its own so we're going to take this one here if his rook comes down and um, that's where the question mark was wasn't it ah, there we go yeah if we take then his rook comes down with a check on our king and he's on the inside so our queen would then have to take and then his queen would take our bishop here like this our rook could then come and put pressure onto the queen so then the queen has to find something dynamic to gain some compensation because we've got a two on one on the knight here so that might work take bishops on the queen rook comes down queen takes 
queen takes rook comes across two or more on the knight and my, our king is safe we're not getting any checks on so does he come down for our bishop here white square bishop so that's probably what he'll do next comes for the white square bishop but obviously the bishop can take and then this rook will need to probably come here doing an x-ray through to our rook we've still got the queen supporting so that's okay so i think that's how that's going to pan out let's take advantage of that let's take and that's it for the correspondence game so that's sort of my training tool and uh, playing the correspondence games and just trying to practice as best possible as you can see for a majority of them and um, we seem to be a minor piece up at the minute but it's for me practicing how to keep that advantage because um, over the years in over the board games I've gained advantage and then I've lost the advantage so I'm constantly now trying to work on those that weak area in keeping the advantage and maintaining this the squeeze so that's um the first part of our trading next part of our trading is uh, going in going to play um what time is it now uh, we're not playing i don't think we're playing super blitz and uh, we'll see what's available may play some 10 minute games so next part of the training day um we're basically going through a five minute arena uh, under 1700 it's only about 23 minutes left but you know we're not doing it to win anything we're just uh, doing basically blitz type stuff we just do as training games so we'll just throw them out there it's not to say we're playing absolutely rubbish it's just that i don't usually there'll, there'll be lines that i don't usually play i'm just trying to practice different ways of moving some of them may look familiar and straightforward but there are certain differences when I'm playing in the Blitz arena. It's not my bag. I don't like playing Blitz. But it's like a reverse psychology now that I've got in place by playing Blitz. And so I'm just going to just attack through the center here. The capture could take with the queen. Let's take with the knight maybe. Yeah. There's lots of maybes, ifs and stuff all sorts within the training games and let's x-ray through to the queen here so it's not enough time for me for my brain to work properly so he's taking his queen off of the x-ray and now he's um targeting here so we could push here but then his pawn takes so that's not a benefit could come there or we could just take the knight off the board or we could bring our bishop here x-raying through the pawn obviously his knight can just come and attack the bishop uh, or we could come here with the queen looking to <coughs> looking to attack the bishop what do we do let's do that not the same amount of time as playing like a 10 minute game even though 10 minute is still low you can still put a little bit more thought into your moves so this wouldn't be my best move but it's a move to try and put some pressure on theirs and their queen is currently here i'm just wondering and if we did take bum, 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 bum. Yeah. it's looking to champion this i think his queen wants this angle so we're still just going to attack the bishop anyway just keeping it simple straightforward yep so once he's king so we're going to capture no heirs or graces so at this point here now we need to move the knights i think over towards the king's side could bring the queen up first but then his pawn's just going to drop down and uh, maybe then we can come here x-ray through to their queen but then his knight can come and challenge the queen and then we're sort of getting trapped because if we move up then he moves his knight his bishops on us so it's a bit tricky so maybe the knights first yeah okay let's bring the knight across first it's very easy to get caught into a, a trap so yeah it's attacking our knight so i'm going to bring the knight across bring the knight up again 
if we can there we go you see this is blitz don't have enough time to think about the ramifications of my moves so there might be a positive out of this because he snapped up a pawn snapped up a pawn but not for a good position his knight can always go back his knight's defending his knight interesting times so doubling up the attack on the on the knight I'm thinking making them pay the price for greedy grabbing a pawn they probably could have developed other pieces it's attacking the queen that's a nice touch yeah see so now we can't really do much we can go here we can go here let's go here still angling again towards the king still on his knight now he's got like a three on one there so the person knows what they're doing going to take it anyway there's no point dancing around so he captures it back okay so he's on the pawn here so might as well push up here like this so in these sort of crazy games here so now he's like trying to improve his position with his again don't really want to get my knight queen trapped and the thing is he's going to come here with his knight but now it's not the same situation with the bishop being up there so I'm going to bring my queen across still trying to maintain some sort of pressure towards their king area so it's gone the other way with the knight so I think that might be a blessing right so we can come here or we can go here looking for the knight to potentially go here but obviously his pawn can just drop down gonna have like a two on one so we'll lose the pawn but maybe the rook is gonna have some strength across here two and ten is on oh, I'm moving slow so he captures opening up our king his queen currently is not in the game at this moment so I'm just gonna grab here it's causing some havoc now so bringing the knight here I lose the pawn so I'd have to support if I was going to do that now the rook is coming down looking for a champion in here so we might as well come across it's attacking the queen he needs to get this release for the queen to have double power so he's probably going to be moving his knight his knight doesn't have any protection at the moment so bring the queen across uh, yes so he's moved it now so this pawn can drop down so we just go here x-ray through to the queen queen doesn't have any support but he's going to want to get rid of us so pawn coming down or the rook attacking but he really wants the rook to stay there because of that power base so the pawn is down and we can just stay in this corner here just for a moment and if we can manage to get the knight out 135 to 2 minutes so yeah scrappy not much thought being put into any of the moves per se just you know trying to get position just bring the knight up didn't even let's get pieces into the game as best possible he's still wanting this but now his rook's gone into the back so is there something here we could put a 2 on 1 on this pawn easily supported by the rook 128 143 so they're starting to lose time which is good for us knight can't go here it could go there though attacking both the knight and the rook so that might might be a positive so he's defended could attack the queen rook takes uh, let's just attack the rook and the knight do we take with the pawn or take with the queen interesting question i think i'm taking with the queen his rook comes down now we're challenging the queen he's still got this power base here uh, he's going to do that in a second he's not actually because he's still got the power base here let's go for the exchange 115 116 he's caught us up he's lower than us now on time so that's a plus he's not going for the exchange now this king here has got to have some trouble let's attack this pawn 
Is he coming here with his rook? Uh, he's coming there with the rook, but if he does, we can take here with a check. Oh, he's moving very masterfully. Um, uh, could you put your pick a quick, 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 quick? Just take. Take, just take, don't overthink. We're on one minute, they're on 52. Squish, squish, okay. Check on the king. Nothing much really doing. He's got these two pawns against one here. And this rook is stuck in the middle at the minute. Let's uh, just bring this rook up. Could potentially come across attacking this pawn. And I think they've realized that, so. Do we just take? Let's take. This king's going to come and support if we go. Oh, he's got a center pawn. He's got a center pawn which is supported, and my king is not going to be able to come and help. I'm going to have to move the king because his rook is just going to come there and block. Might go there now anyway. Yeah, so he's coming across. I have to bring my king in. Better not do a preemptive because he might do a sly one and move. It's on 16 seconds. Oh no, what's happening? I moved the wrong piece. Oh, okay, let's go. 34 seconds, they're on 13. 10, 9, blah, blah, blah. Let's, uh, let's go around the back. Just do something to make them think about something. Six seconds, let's grab. Four seconds. They can't do nothing in four seconds now. Oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely, scrappy, no thinking type game. Excellent. Um, so there's only 13 minutes left of the arena. Should we just go in for another one? Uh, let's do that. It's a five-minute game. Let's go again. Okay, so we're in training mode, so we're not overthinking anything. Just um, bringing things out developing trying to maintain some semblance of order but we're not going to get bent out of shape if it's not let's just go here with the pawn and go here with the bishop now I'm getting all congested in so I've got to wait for the opponent to overextend now if they're going for the win then let's try and take advantage of any gaps let's um, castle so they've attacked so let's go for the bishop just take this off the board yeah so we've got them overextending they're just attacking they're going really crazy let's go for x-ray through to the queen let's take that off actually and shall we no we shouldn't do that just yet let's go here so this bishop is looking to yeah okay let's go here now we've got support of this pawn does he want to take no it doesn't so the queen king is now open a little bit so we could take but then his rook is going to be on us so let's congest the bishop in and let's get our queen trying to face their king just give it a little bit of a touch obviously the rook is going to come and attack so just bring the queen here just attacking this unprotected piece could easily just drop down uh, bishop's there so let's attack the bishop now Bishop has to move, so we'll probably get this pawn for free for a moment. Let's go here. Rook's coming down, it's going to be facing off, but then the pawn can take. But this pawn has got no protection, so the rook needs to basically get into the game. Got to be mindful, he's going to be coming down here at some point with his bishop. He's going to go for that cheap thing here, the queen coming across. So. Uh, let's go here because he's looking to double up with a rook queen's coming and attacking so going here so i think they lose tempo and lose a rook and they're going really quick like it's a bullet match um right so let's support this center palm uh white square bishop could let's just keep pushing white square bishop white square bishop could come here could go there round to here something like that 
let's bring this rook attacking this pawn first in front of the king and let's bring the bishop around like we said so if it can go here and come here then it's putting a check on the king this pawn can't take so I'm assuming it's pushing past and if they do we can push onto it I suppose it, this can't do a tour so uh, is it my go? no oh, it is my go yeah, I've been sat there thinking wasting time okay and just bring the bishop here like we said he's going to take the pawn so the bit oh he's not taking the pawn So let's attack this pawn again. He's um, feeling safe now, he's got a nice passer. So we've given him something there. Let's uh, go here. Idea being bring the rook across. 230. And let's just hit this pawn. It's going to be pushing this, so we're just going to block it with the rook, I suppose. Or does he just bring his rook to support here? <clears throat> just trying to break it all up. It's all scrappy and stuff like that. We're trying to use some semblance of concept, but you know. Um, so he's actually going to just take here. And his bishop has got this diagonal here, but it's not any other support. So we could bring the rook here to attack this pawn. I believe, yeah. So he's supported now. Um, interesting times let's just oh that's okay we're still a piece up let's go here like this attacking the rook and then push up a little bit maybe get a queen with a check on the king I think the king hat well, is not moving, so we'll go with a check on him. And is he going crazy here? Shall we just grab something here? Time's running down, so we're going to have to just move a little bit quicker. Two fifty, they're on. That's a, a lifetime. But it looks like we've got a bit of an advantage they do have a passer which they could start pushing down but then obviously they lose the rook and then just grab with a check and then put another check and um, we could start pushing pawns up now he does have space yes although he doesn't have much space does he he can't move here he can't move there he can't move there so we're going to be in a stalemate situation if we're not careful it's got these pawns that can move and they've resigned that was a that was quite a nice trading game actually yeah absolutely scatty yeah okay so that's what we do um within our training day we're going to play a proper game or over on chess.com which is the 10 minute game and yeah, we'll see how that one pans out <laughs> okay so yeah cheers for that Okay, so to end the training session off, uh, we play the 10 minute game or anything over 10 minutes on on uh, chess.com just to see if we can improve the level that we're playing at. So this is where we the slow jog through to the 1800s. I think we're like 13, 12 at the minute. But like we said, we'll go up and down, up and down. But we are attempting to do our better moves within this area now. We initially started with the Blitz area to get us to like the 1300s area. Um, because Blitz isn't my bag, I treat those more as training exercises. I can't say that often enough. Um, it's not to me proper chess, it's just quick moves. But there is something that I can pull from it, which I'm wanting to help improve my longer play game. So I'm doing the reversal, yep. And so I'm fully behind the long play games. This is why we're focusing on those and trying to target to get to the 1800 with the slow jog process. 
okay, within the chess.com arena. It's very difficult, it's very hard, and they have some very, very, very strong players on here. So we've talked through all of that, so I'm not going to go through it anymore. So I'm gonna start off now playing a 10 minute zero increment game. We may fluctuate the length of the games as we're going through, but we won't be going under 10 minute games on chess.com. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay, so we'll click play. Five, four, three, two, one. We get one. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and off we go. So try and make better moves here. I'm trying to improve our game. Um, on this very very strong side chess.com is a very strong side they've got strong players on here but this is where we're trying to get to the 1800 mark it's not saying lie chess hasn't got strong players on but chess.com has proven to me to be the, the most strongest <laughs> site ever to actually get to 1800 on so I'm going to develop the knight it's nice and steady it's protecting the pawn here no issues going to push the pawn because it's supporting this pawn if the bishop takes and the opponent's playing it like it's um, a blitz match or a bullet match so that's good for us so they're moving real quick it's all set so we could take the pawn or we could just leave it if we leave it then he takes and he gets two pawns so we might as well just grab moving so fast that this is like a set play thing for them so I'm going to develop the knight so if we can get castled then we best do so going to develop the bishop i'm just looking to see if there's any other areas that they're potentially going to win like this pawn here has got no protection on so i'm going to castle so now the knight's coming down it's blocked by this pawn here but got to remember this pawn isn't defended and they've moved really fast a smaller piece could attack a higher piece this bishop's not developed at the moment. I don't think there's any credence in bringing the bishop here because there's nothing really behind the knight, so it could um, develop itself. Could go here to attack his rook, but then obviously his rook can come here or it can support the pawn here. And then what's my bishop doing on the edge? This pawn has no protection, got to keep that in mind. Could develop the rook. Could attack his pawn here with our rook so it's got no no defender on it at the moment so i think attacking an undefended piece at this moment would work for us obviously he's going to defend it whoa so he's defending it with the queen so we do have this pawn that is unprotected so we could attack the queen and the pawn because we have the bishop supporting the pawn so in essence we have two pieces so if the pawn does take we could take back and then queen exchange is potentially going to take place do we lose out in terms of this pawn being able to push down let's have a look at that picture if we attack he takes we take say the queen takes because it's got what well, it's got support with the knight so maybe it doesn't do anything maybe it doesn't so it's nothing there, nothing there. If the pawn then pushes down onto the knight. Yeah, so let's say he takes because he wants to get rid of the queen. The rook takes and then this pawn drops down. There's no pawn here protecting and our bishop is then stuck. His knight will be able to take our knight and then we'll probably lose the bishop. interesting yes interesting i still think it works but there's i don't want to lose the bishop he takes he takes we go very quick uh, da, 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 da. he takes see the queen takes then the rook takes then this pawn comes down onto the knight knight goes here his knight takes our knight Ooh, yeah maybe I need to find something a little bit better than that interesting so we could attack the pawn but then we're giving up the pawn 
So we could attack the bishop, see what he wants to do, because now we know that this position is not what we're wanting. So I think I'm going to attack the bishop and then see if we can get it out of the way. Then we can think about doing this attack. Depends on what the opponent does. They're actually taking, so we're actually on the queen. So all of that calculation's just gone out of the window. So we're on his knight, so he's probably going to have to bring his queen either to here or to here. Yeah, attacking our unprotected pawn. So we could take his knight, then his queen takes. And... We're on five minutes at the minute, so we're going to need to speed up. I'm just waiting for a moment to speed up. Uh, da, da, da. If we did this... Again, if he takes... He takes oh yeah we lose out on that one okay if we did that he's got too many pieces on there hasn't he? he's got the pawn pawn knight i'm taking the knight off the board bishop can come through and defend this way or the queen can come i need to get the bishop off the back and then it's got a nice diagonal through to his pawn and the rook so i think we're going to do that Okay, five minutes look at the opponent they're, they're not even broken the 10 minute mark yet they're still in nine minutes oh okay right they're breaking into the eight now so they've moved very fast but we've tried to do some calculations this is based on experience only in trying to against chess.com type players um trying to really work out what it is that makes them so strong because they come out with some fantastical yes so he's defending this pawn here so we're not going to get away with that i suppose but if we bring this rook here got to be careful because his knight can't come here at the minute can't come there at the minute okay let's go here so then we're developing a 2 on one with the bishop and the pawn if we can shove this up and the knight no nope. yes so it's coming there if we pushed onto this pawn this pawn can take like we said we can take back maybe his queen takes and then we take the pawn here rook takes bishop takes All this overthinking when the queen can just take the knight wow wow that was a and they've resigned <laughs> that was one of those moments where the one of the main things i learned from um the blitz move you know the training games is when I look at the evaluation afterwards or I look at the videos afterwards that I've created and I sat there going why didn't you just take that piece you know and make it more complicated for myself than it needs to be and this was another case in point of sitting back having a look at what was going on and eventually seeing it maybe I should have been a bit quicker seeing it but it got seen so I'm really chuffed with that so that's the end of today's training session for chess that's how we uh, chess gym um, develop we work with the correspondence games um, which are the longer games to really stretch out the thought processes and looking at the strategies and and position play and because that's well that's the sort of system that we like we like the pos uh, position play we like to utilize the answer process that we're working on really does help us to work with the mantra that we've built up within the answer so the correspondence games are the our go-to training area they're the kingpin for our training area the longer play games and then they you know they support those cor <coughs> those correspondence games and then obviously the training games are like the blitz games the faster games and we just utilize those as we say for training purposes not necessarily for the wins it's learning how to lose and then develop from those evaluations of the losses and if more wins come our way because we're doing that then that's all well and good but we're not going to get bent out of shape over losing shorter games <clears throat> and then we come on to the longer games such as this one and um, where we're 
basically saying it's not a training game it's actually a proper game that we're wanting to play so if there's errors made in it then we really need to go back in and evaluate why that happened and so yeah this game showed lessons learned from the training games really does pay off so that's it from chess gym cheers <laughs>